I am Jenni Partanen from Academy of Architecture and Urban Studies, Tallinn University of Technology. And my uh, presentation is titled Dynamic Conceptual Model for Big Data Management for Urban Planning in Self-Organizing Cities. My submission number is 67. We use hundreds of different platforms and dashboards for organizing urban data today. And those platforms supposedly assist in urban planning and management. In developed countries, there are undoubtedly as many platforms as cities, and that's probably a drastic understatement. For example, in Tallinn alone, there are dozens covering all aspects of life. I suggest that the crucial challenges in building such tools are related to two central issues. First, cities are extremely complex and in a state of flux. They are constantly becoming and difficult to control with hierarchical methods, including digital ones. For their complexity, cities typically avoid long-term predictions even those carried out using sophisticated computer simulations. Urban systems evolve dynamically as a result of myriads of human unconcerted contributions, often in an unpredictable manner. While most of the time the urban systems are in steady state and more predictable, the transitions might be sudden and drastic, economic shifts, social disruptions, ecosystem failures and pandemics might push the system to a whole new trajectory. Secondly, expanding of a digitalization occurring in almost all aspects of life, particularly in cities, creates massive amounts of so-called big data every millisecond as a side product of human activity. Big data has potential to help us to understand urbanity in a whole new level but it is by definition unstructured, messy, and constantly piling up and changing as well. Actually, for planning, the context of the data is more important than the data itself. So, the challenge for planning tools that attempt to coordinate this data is twofold. First, how to categorize the data to reflect the increasingly complex rhizomatic nature of urbanity, and secondly, how to be able to update these categories at the time of transitions somewhat smoothly to again reflect the complex dynamics of cities. Currently, cities are understood as systems where its parts, actors, individuals and institutions dynamically interact with each other and with their environment. This view contrasts with analytical view splitting phenomena into subproblems and trying to solve them separately in silos. Starting from 1990s, particularly theories of complex adaptive systems have provided an appropriate frame for urban research and planning, since they imply actors' dissipated decision-making resulting in higher-level patterns, systems' constant evolution and sudden transitions in systems' dynamics which often contrasts with traditional linear view of cities aiming at optimization and prediction. Self-organization is a mechanism where agents' interactions produce higher scale unintentional order without external guidance. Self-organization is common in natural open complex systems, from cellular and molecular scale to organisms and animal flocking behavior, urban regions and social systems. The system's dynamics is guided by the feedback from the emerging pattern to the agent. Self-organizing pattern typically form as an emergent order enslaves the agents while they start to follow the transient dominant order. Certain structures stabilize over others. Self-organization can be considered as a pre-evolutionary principle for also non-living entities. Parts of the system form order autonomously. They adapt to the environment while the order enslaves the parts, benefiting the system one way or another. 
for example to save energy or material or reduce friction. Self-organization can be embraced for exploring urban dynamics, mechanisms and processes because this viewpoint stresses the lack of perfect knowledge in actors' decision-making and therefore supporting the data-based approach suggested here. In cities, geographical clusters of particular industries or segregation of certain population groups are prime examples of self-organization. These all follow so-called order parameter. The number of people share a view towards an attribute and this view dictates others as actors attempt to gain benefit from, for example, collaboration or competition with the neighboring firm or following the group view or social pressure. However, despite this autonomous order, to perceive it we need strategic thinking. To be able uh, to comp contemplate any system, the planner must discover and define the particular system, its entities, interlinkages and the rules guiding this. Depending on the problem they want to solve, extracting the system's elements from disordered pool of information. Systems do not exist as such, but only as human interpretations. Strategy building is intrinsically centralized activity, implying coherent vision and aim, discovering meaningful features, components and relations from the chaotic sea of data. Urban self-organization can be perceived only in the framework of strategically perceived system. The methods for extracting features of complex urbanity from data must embrace and successfully combine both intertwined viewpoints top-down and bottom-up. Self-organization was discovered in 1970s and it has been applied in, on many fields since. In 1980s, Teo Kohonen introduced a groundbreaking paradigm for artificial neural networks called self-organizing maps. They imply computing functions just like those taking place in the brain emerging autonomously, building paradigm for unsupervised learning in computer science, even for self-organizing hardware structure. Furthermore, also higher cognitive processes above cellular level, such as memory, follow similar self-organization. In the dynamic memory model, the cognitive processes, understanding, learning and memorizing are intertwined. Individual events form self-organizing clusters, remindings. Remindings are recalled and adapted for problem solving in a new situation. This has offered an inspiration for case-based system in computing where prior solutions form a library that can be adjusted, combined and adapted for solving new problems. We can consider that planning is about rules. First, emergent rules, dependencies between urban entities and processes, and normative rules that should reflect the emergent ones. Here I present two applications considering rule formulation of urban data for planning, considering emergent dynamics and implying self-organizing ontology building. First, liquid planning for information processing for planning rules, and secondly, case-based, rule-based system for dynamically updating them. First, collective cognitive processes can occur through self-organizing grouping of information. To perceive the city, humans must self-organize their information. For new entities, information is either grouped as new or existing class and given semantic meanings. Some interpretations become prevalent, enslaving the system. This nested transcalar system by Hermann Haken and Yuval Portugali is called synergetic interrepresentation networks, and it has inspired, for example, liquid planning approach. In liquid planning, the actors make individual proposals, for example, subjectively perceived problems regarding the target area or for spatial functional solutions for these. Individual inputs from professional and layman planners, specialists and other participating actors are organized into classes collectively in a dynamic process according to regularities and similarities without external guidance. 
In this procedure, information self-organizes into coherent ontological classes. The emergent themes or patterns form a starting point for planning rules that form the core of the system. These statutory rules that guide our action reflect the urban dynamics well in steady state. From time to time, ruptures occur pushing the urban dynamics into a new, uh, unpredictable path. For example, innovations in technology may have a surprising impact on societies. While adapting to a new steady state through self-organization, statutory rules need to be updated. In many disciplines, from law to medicine, computing and planning, so-called case-based reasoning is used to tackle this challenge. Basically, case-based reasoning means that experiences are used in finding new solutions which then adapt to the existing knowledge of similar cases. For example, underdefined law is interpreted against decisions of Supreme Court. For urban planning, such AI-based system is founded on combination of rule-based and case-based reasoning. Underdefined statutory planning rules are drawn from real-world processes. Each new project is then reflected against the rule-based framework. For enabling the emergent of new types, case-based system is presented for recognizing new typological shifts emerging in the case area. The statutory rules can be infrequently updated using such system any time new patterns start to occur. Consequently, for general guidelines, I suggest that first we need to adopt complexity frame to understand the dynamic and nonlinear nature of cities. Secondly, we should adopt self-organization as a key principle for understanding and guiding dynamic, efficient order in nature and artificial systems such as cities. Thirdly, based on these, I suggest that the above described applications of liquid process and case-based reasoning could be combined and provide a conceptual model for structuring data for planners' use. Next, I present a semantic example for this process. Let's take an oversimplified example of a hypothetical city and assume that one of their general strategic aims is to enhance cities' economic viability. To discover rules promoting this purpose, the, they first carry out the liquid process among stakeholders, planners, other city officials, decision makers, local business people, residents and associations, to recognize essential urban phenomena in the city for the ontologies or rules for planning. In collaborative process, online or live, each of them raises the most important issues applying data provided by specialists and categorize them in a self-organizing process. One of the resulting classes could be, for example, enhancing diversity in mixed-use districts, among others, and proposing locations for the most important or potential areas. This implies, for example, uh, variables of activity, proximity, and so on. For planning, the statement would be formulated as a rule. For example, there must be a minimum number of uses in each block uh, to be diverse, or the policy needs to be revised. Next, the rule-based case-based system is applied. As was said, in time, new cases are reflected against the loose framework of rules, in this example based on legal industry code to estimate diversity of uses. As long as the codes apply, which means they reflect the real-world activities, there are two options. Either the diversity is high enough and a rule applies, or the diversity drops, indicating that the viability is in threat and potentially new policy is needed to attract actors to the area. The system seeks for analogies with prior cases stored in the case base to recognize also other similarities between their attributes. For example, diverse customer flows, connectedness with local communities, or certain daily rhythms. These may eventually become a new ontology or class forming the rule. 
This might be the case for emerging industries previously unclassified. For this, data of all properties must be stored with attributes, including the processual steps. The case-based system resembles triangulation, where the new case is first compared with a general rule, then against empirical cases in particular area. Such a procedure could lead to a re-evaluation of the strategy, aims and goals, and eventually to another liquid phase, and so on. I have presented here a conceptual model for organizing and managing data for urban planning to respond to the challenge of constant change and expanding digitalization of cities. The presented model could help in formulating starting points for dashboards that collect and process data for planning in an interactive manner with data scientists, planners and other stakeholders, applying learning algorithms for data mining and grouping. This is a semantic model, so it has a lot of limitations regarding practical implementation. In future, it would be necessary first to study carefully the relationships between liquid information processing and the need for specialist-led method in defining ontologies and relationships. And also the rule-based case-based system would require profound mathematization and an empirical case study for evaluating its capacity for a computational tool. In addition, thorough scrutiny of urban data would be necessary to evaluate its degree of applicability for such system both in case studies and more generally. Thank you.